Hey everybody, I'm Bill. Thanks for joining me on my tutorial today. This is Anime Studio and Reference Layers. Specifically, this is how you can use Reference Layers in Anime Studio to speed up your workflow. Reference Layers have a lot of qualities that lend themselves to very complex character rigs, which are actually much simpler to control than they initially seem. As an example, here are Rackety and Bear Coon. These are two characters that I've rigged in Anime Studio 11 for my upcoming short film, and they use reference layers extensively to keep things as simple as possible. I'm hoping that this tutorial can give all of you an easier time with your characters as well. Let's get started. So just to start, I want to go over what reference layers actually do. So if you start with a single layer here, just with a circle on it, um, you can hit this little icon here, reference layer, and it will make a clone of your original layer. And I'll rename this to ref just to so you can tell them apart. And if we move the reference layer over to the left here so it's not on top of the original shape, you can see what happens here. Uh, if I go to the original layer and I do make any change to it at all, you can see that the change automatically gets carried over to the reference layer as well immediately in real time. Um, so you can use this for so many different things and it, ma it makes rigging a character a lot easier, um, it makes masking a lot easier, and I'll get into why that is in this video. But this is the basis of a reference layer, and you can actually have multiples of these. So if I duplicate the reference layer and I move that to a third position, again just so you can see that these are all different layers but they're linked to the same source, you can see that all of them follow the movement of the original. Now if I go to a reference layer and move that around, that has its own unique movements. It uh, doesn't, it's not linked to the other two the way the original is linked to these. Um, and this is something that you should actually try to avoid uh, unless you have a specific reason for moving the points on a reference layer, you shouldn't because then it falls out of sync with the original. Since I moved some points on this reference here, it's no longer following the changes that I make to the original layer. So if that happens, you can fix that by going to your reference layer, going all the way down here to the bottom left where it says point motion not referenced. You can right click on that and sync channel to original and it snaps it back to whatever the original layer is doing. So it's possible to accidentally move something around on a reference layer and get that out of sync and at that point you just need to go in there and fix it. And you can actually see here that uh, normally it even references layer transform but since I moved both of these to the left and upper left um, it's no longer referencing layer transform but of course if I sync channel to original then suddenly both of these layers are directly on top of the original. So that about wraps it up for the intro to reference layers, and now I can get on to all the cool things you can do by sort of messing with these concepts and playing around with what isn't actually copied between the original and the reference. So I'll get into that next. Now I'm going to show you how you can use reference layers to control both a mask and the contents of that mask all from the same layer. You can see I've got an example already set up here you can pretend it's an eyeball with an eyelid. So I, the eyeball itself, this white shape, is acting as the mask, and then it's masking this darker colored shape that is currently acting as an eyelid. These really just started as two spheres, and I just manipulated the points into being something that can be recognizable. But the point stands that I'm controlling the mask as well as what it is masking all from the same layer. Normally you'd have to click between two different layers to control what's happening there and it gets kind of messy, but with this it's all from one layer which makes things very very easy. So I'm going to delete all this and I'll show you exactly how to set all that up. So I'll make a brand new layer I'll delete my old one here. So this is how we start. I'll start by making two shapes on the same layer and to keep things simple, I'll make them different colors. So we have a blue sphere and a red sphere. And I'll name this layer original. 
So you need to make two references based on this layer. One we'll call mask and the other we'll call masked object. The next thing that you want to do, which is a little bit strange, at least for me, is you actually want to go into, you want to put the original layer on the very top of your layers palette, uh, go into its properties and select hide and editing view here and don't render this layer. So what will happen there is it will do what it says and hide the layer from view, but you can actually still control the points on that layer even though it's hidden. So it's a little hard to see that in action here because the original layer is hidden but you're seeing the two references that I cloned from it. So I'll continue on and it'll start to make a little more sense later. So next let's select, let's hide everything except the mask layer here. And so we want the red shape to act as the mask. So on this reference layer, which is cloned from the original, mind you, click on the blue shape and deselect fill. So the blue shape's actually gone from this reference layer. It's still controlled by the original, as you can see here, but the blue shape is gone. It still exists, but it's invisible. So let's go to now the masked object layer and do the opposite. We want the blue shape to be what is masked by the red shape. So let's select the red shape and hide it. So now what we've basically done is we have one layer that is just the red circle and one layer that is just the blue circle. But both are controlled by a third layer which is invisible up here. Now that we've separated the layers, visually at least, uh, select both the mask object and the mask layer, create a new group with selection, and turn this into a mask. You can do that by hitting the properties button, going to the masking tab, and selecting hide all. So now, if you go to the mask layer, you'll see that it is set to add to mask, which is what you want and the masked object layer is set to mask this layer, which is also what you want. So now that your mask is set up, you can go to your original layer, and you can move the blue circle into the red circle, and you can see that it's acting exactly as we would expect. The red circle is acting as a mask, and is hiding portions of the blue circle. But you can control either the mask or the object that is being masked all from the same layer, which Normally you can't do, so this can save you a lot of time. And so now if you see here, you can just easily set this up to be a creepy red eyeball with a blue eyelid, but the, uh, sa the, the same concept applies as the example I was showing you before. Just to finish this up, you can collapse your mask folder, and you really never have to worry about any layers within this folder or the folder itself again. You can ignore it completely because the only thing you ever need to manipulate is this original layer here, the one that we hid from view. It's really just acting as a control layer. And you can even go ahead and color code it to be green and just keep it, no matter how many layers you create, even if you have 200 layers, keep this control layer at the very top and you can easily access any of these masked objects in your scene even if they're stacked within five or ten other folders it doesn't matter how compl how complex your scene gets as long as you keep the original layer up here you can control it freely whenever you want and it's very easy to get to if I go to my character rig over here you can see that I've done that to a much larger degree I have six control layers up at the top here and these are all for controlling different aspects of her face there's one for her mouth one for her eyes things like that uh, and I've color coded them so the colors are here and then any reference layers that come from that original layer are all color coded to match down here and you can see that some of these have four possibly even five or six different references but again I just have all these layers expanded to show you what's going on, but normally I can collapse all these and I never have to worry about any of these layers that are below this point. 
It's just these six layers that I need to control in addition to the bones that I've set. And it makes animation so much quicker and more fun because you are worrying about less. You can just focus on moving the points around and getting some good animation out of your character. So that's one way that reference layers can really speed up your animation workflow. And I've got some other ones that I can show you in a moment here too. This next part is really more of a demonstration to get you thinking about other nifty ways you could use reference layers. It's not a specific technique for any one thing. So just to start this out, um, I'm going to make a stroke um, just to make sure it's nice and visible here. So this is a a path with a stroke applied and it's got uh, five points to it. And I wanted to introduce first this tool that may that not everyone may know about called the hide edge tool and it does kind of what you think it will. You can click on any edge that exists between two points, two vertices, and it will hide it. But the it, it's just hiding the stroke. The edge itself, the line, it still exists. So if you look here, as I move this point around, you can see that the left edge of this line is still responding to that movement and inheriting some of that motion uh, from the curvature. And you can really kind of go crazy with this idea here. Um, and what's interesting is that the hide edge setting is not something that's shared between in a layer and any of its references. So if I go back and, and show all the parts of this line again and then I create a reference layer, um, I'll demonstrate it this way. So to start, I'll take the layer transform tool and move the reference below the original. So to demonstrate what's going on here, I've got the original layer on the top and the reference layer on the bottom. So you can see that the reference layer is inheriting all the motion and transforms from the original layer as expected. But look what you can do here. I can go to the reference layer and I can use the hide edge tool to hide an edge over here. Go back to the original layer and this is still working as you would hopefully expect. The, the reference layer is inheriting the motion from the original, but I can hide any portion of the reference that I want. I can even go to the original layer and hide a different portion of it, and these are still linked. So you can really use this to your advantage and create some interesting visual effects with your rig, with your characters, and they'll look very complex and very interesting visually, but it, you're actually just controlling it all with one layer. So now that I've explained how you can use the Hide Edge tool, um, I want to go over an example of how you can combine Hide Edge with reference layers to do something really fun and save yourself a bunch of time. Because that's what this tutorial is all about, is saving yourself a bunch of time. So let's have a look here at a little cartoon Saturn or any planet with rings. So normally what you do here is you'd have to make three layers. Um, you need to have the far away part of the ring on the bottom layer, then the planet on the middle layer, and then the near part of the ring on the top layer, right? That's how it's always been done traditionally when you're working with layers, but you don't have to do that. You can actually just set it up with the hide edge tool, and I'll explain how. So you start with your first layer here uh, with everything on it. Um, and you actually want to make three reference layers out of it. You can probably guess what these three layers are going to be doing, but let's move the original layer onto the top. Let's hide it and set it to not render. And now let's go through each of these reference layers and hide different parts of it. So on the bottommost layer, we want to hide the planet and we want to take the hide edge tool and hide the front part of the ring. So we're only seeing the back. Then in the middle layer, you can hide the rings, so we only see the planet. And then on the top layer, you can hide the planet and use the hide edge tool to hide the far away back part of the rings. And so when we show all three, now we have a fully functional ring system and a planet that is properly placed in the middle of the ring. 
And, the, and again, this is all controlled with one layer, the ring and the planet. So you'll just have an easy time animating this. And, you know, I, clearly this can be a basketball hoop or whatever else you want it to be. That's up to you. I just wanted to show you a nice technique that might speed up your workflow and help you have an easy time. That technique with the hide edge tool in combination with reference layers has really helped me out with my character Bear Coon. You can see that she's got a pretty crazy ear set up here. She's got two pairs of ears and the primary set of ears on the top actually wraps around her head. They come down low here right on top of her eyebrow, right on top of her eyes, so they're effectively acting like eyebrows, but then they wrap all the way around her head behind her skull. And I've been able to set up a really smooth head turn here using that same technique that I showed you with the, with the Saturn and the rings. The, her head is the planet, and her eyebrow ear lobe here, this gray shape, those are the rings. It's really the same concept. So you can take that basic concept and stretch it out and ex extrapolate it to all sorts of crazy things. It's all up to you. So I'd really love to see what any of you make with it. Leave it in the comments. I'll check it out. Um, if you have more questions, ask them, and I'll be happy to answer them in other tutorials or even just in the comments. I'd love to make more content related to Anime Studio on this channel, and admittedly, it is going to be to buy myself time and my channel some time so I can finish my cartoon. I just posted that 6 or 12 second preview, and that's 12 seconds out of 6 minutes, so I have a lot more work ahead of me, but with techniques like this, maybe it won't take so long. We'll find out. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully I'll have more content for you soon. Bye. Yeah! We should use them as bedding when we hibernate! <laughs> what? Winter's like eons away from now, Rat Kitty. See, it's barely even fall yet.